That is the cry I believe of every believer. It does not matter what level of development you are. Whether you are an apostle, bishop, a prophet. We all need to hear from God. We are all craving from, for guidance from God. So when faith is in both your heart and in your mouth, then your faith will begin to work and you will begin to see results. What are you doing with your faith? What are you doing with the word of God in your heart? Have you believed God? What are you doing with that word that you have believed God for? What are you believing? I'm asking us. Let us begin to speak forth the word of God. Hey, child of God, praise the Lord wherever you are. This is Apostle Arthur Tukahira, founder and senior pastor of Kingdom Revelation Church located in Seguku. We are a church that is under the National Fellowship of Born Again Pentecostal Churches of Uganda. And I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you if you are in the areas of Seguku, if you're in Katale, if you are in Luboa, if you're in Lueza, you're in Jomai or Bunamwaya, wherever. If you are unchurched, if you are in need of fellowship, uh, if you have uh, gone through some difficulties, maybe you have been disappointed uh, where you were, you have had some uh, bad experiences. I'm inviting you to fellowship with us. We meet every Sunday from 10 in the morning to 12.30. Come check us out. We're a church that is sold out to preaching the word of God that is pure, unadulterated. We have a passion to equip the saints of God for the work of the ministry. We want to help you along your journey of faith. And so if you are unchurched, if you are not meeting, you are in your home, the scriptures tell us that uh, in Hebrews 10.25, do not give up the habit of fellowshipping, of meeting. So if you want to discover your purpose in God, if you want to discover your purpose in life, if you want to discover your uh, ministry call, if you want to grow as a leader, if you want to increase in your business acumen, if you want to be mentored, if you want to have a life coach, I invite you to Kingdom Revelation Church. If you have no church, you are unchurched, you are in the environments I've mentioned, please come and visit us and may God bless you even as you do that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is the greatest pleasure of our lives if we can minister to you. So I invite you, please come, come with your family, come with your friends, check us out and may God guide your steps as you do that in Jesus mighty name. I look forward to seeing you one of these days. God richly bless you. Amen and amen. Jodi 
Welcome you to our service this day, wherever you are tuning in from. This is Kingdom Revelation Church coming to you with uh, a word from the throne of grace. Even as we begin 2022, we want to uh, trust God for you and for your dreams. And uh, I'm praying that um, as we begin this year, we will begin to take... Uh, steps to make room in our lives for the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is the year that uh, as a nation we have been given a prophetic word that this is a, a year where revival shall begin to manifest in Uganda. And in considering that prophetic word, I began to see the need for the Holy Spirit in our lives like never before. And so as we begin uh, this 2022, I want us to go into a series on the Holy Spirit. I want us to spend some time on a journey about the Holy Spirit. And to begin us today, I want to speak to us on the subject, God's gift 
and promise to the believer. The Holy Spirit, God's gift and promise to the believer. And at the very beginning, I want us to make a good distinction. There is a distinction between the ministry of Jesus and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 verses 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have a, a, a eternal life. That means that uh, Jesus Christ is God's gift to the world. Let me say that one more time. Jesus is God's gift to the world. But the Holy Spirit, on the other hand, is God's gift to the believer. The Bible says something very profound in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 16 to 17. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 16 to 17. These are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may uh, abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He was talking to his disciples. He was talking to those that were walking with him. And he said that the Holy Spirit shall be coming in his stead when he goes he will send the holy spirit another one the comforter and he said that the spirit of truth the holy spirit the world cannot receive him the world cannot receive him because it neither seeth him nor knoweth him and so i want us to understand that jesus is the gift of god to the world while the Holy Spirit is the gift of God to the believer. And so as we begin 2022, the year of revival, as we position ourselves for revival in Uganda and in the nations of the world, as we position ourselves to begin to enter into our prophetic destinies, I want us to make room in our lives for the Spirit of God, understanding that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, is God's gift to you, child of God. If you are a believer, the Spirit of God is God's gift to you. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 17 to 18, Peter is now preaching to the multitudes after the release of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And this is what Peter says. In verses 17 and 18 of uh, Acts chapter 2, he says, quoting from the book of Joel, he says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So Peter is speaking about the end times. And I know, child of God, you understand very well, looking at what is going all around the world, the wars and the rumors of wars, the famines, the pestilences we are going through, the pandemics, you understand that we are living in the last days. And in the last days, God gave us a promise through prophet Joel. And Peter quoted and he says, and it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And young men shall prophesy, old men shall dream dreams. So we are in the last days and we are in the right time, the Kairos moment to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I want you to make room in your life for the Holy Spirit now more than ever before. Now more than ever before. Why? Because we are in the last days. And it was promised, it was prophesied that in the last days, God the Father 
would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Jesus Christ, speaking the gospel of John chapter 16 and verse 7, he says that nevertheless I tell you the truth. He's speaking to his disciples. He says it is expedient for you that I go away. So he's preparing them. It is expedient for you. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So Jesus was saying that uh, it is to our advantage that he goes to the Father. Because when he goes to the Father, then he will send the comforter, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. I believe it is because Jesus Christ, when he was here on earth, he was here as 100% man, even if he was also 100% God. So he came as man, and when he was here, he would be limited geographically. So if it was noise that he was in Capernaum, he was only in that place. When he went to the city of Jerusalem, he would only be there. So the Bible says that when he would go to uh, wait on the Lord in the solitary places, in the mountains, that the multitudes would come looking for him. Not so with the Spirit of God. Not so with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. He is omnipresent. He is here in Kampala as he is wherever you are watching from. He is here with me as he is already with you. So he says it is to your advantage. It is expedient for you that I go. If I go away, then I will send the comforter. I will send the Holy Spirit who has no geographical limitations. And then he shall be able to come to you. And then he says in the Gospel of John again, in the 13th to 15th verse of John 16. John 16, verses 13 to 15. Jesus is speaking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And he says, how bad when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you into all truth. This is what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. To guide us into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here to show us things to come. And so we now have a witness based on the prophetic word upon this nation that revival is just around the corner. So it is incumbent upon you and I to align ourselves and to prepare ourselves to be co-workers with God in this anticipated revival. And then he says in verses 14, he shall glorify me. Jesus is speaking about the Holy, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. That the Holy Spirit shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Verse 15, Jesus says that uh, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, said I, he shall take of mine and he shall show it unto you. Beloved, this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Not only is he a comforter, not only is he a teacher, not only is he an advocate, he is also an intercessor. And when we make room for the Spirit of God, we shall begin to have these ministrations happening in our lives. So I encourage us to make room for the Spirit of God. In John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39, at the end of a feast, the Bible says that in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if any man thirst, let him come and to me and drink. Verse 38, he says, he that believeth on me, remember I say that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is God's gift to the believer. He said that he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly 
shall flow rivers of living water. But this speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So Jesus gave us a promise, and he said, if you thirst, if you hunger for the things of God, he gave us an invitation. He says, come to me and come and drink. Tonight, I extend the same invitation to you wherever you are watching from. Jesus is saying, come to me. And he says, come and drink. He says that he that believeth on me. Child of God, are you a believer? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? This promise is to you. He says, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He's speaking about not a river, but rivers of living water. And the Bible says this is speak of the, of the Holy Spirit who was not yet given because Jesus yet wasn't yet glorified. So he was talking about the ministry of the baptism of the Holy Spirit that I shall speak about in the next Sundays to come. So please understand that the Holy Spirit is God's gift, is God's promise to you, child of God. As long as you have believed on God, the Spirit of God is God's gift to you, is God's promise to you. In Luke chapter 24, we see the Lord Jesus Christ preparing to ascend to heaven. He has finished his ministry on the earth. He is now going to join his father in heaven. And he has a conversation with his disciples. And it's interesting what he says in verses 49. Luke 24 verses 49. This is what the Lord says when he's about to leave the disciples. He says, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. We know that when people die, or when they are about to die, it is the custom of everyone to leave a will to bequeath your properties, your assets, to those that you are leaving behind. And it is interesting that when Jesus was about to leave, to go to the Father, he never left the disciples with any asset. He never left them with any land. He never left them with any house. He never left them with any businesses. But he left them with the most precious thing that they needed the Holy Spirit. He left them the gift of the Father, the promise of the Father. He said, and behold, I send you the promise of my Father upon you. But wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. See, here he says, wait in the city, tarry ye in the city. And unfortunately, some people have used that to propagate a doctrine that when we want to receive the Holy Spirit, when we want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we must tarry. That is not scripturally correct. And I will show us in the next uh, 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 services to come. Here it says tarry because the Holy Spirit has not yet come. But after the Spirit of God came, in Acts chapter 2, there was no more need to tarry for the Holy Spirit. We see in Acts chapter 8, the Samaritans received the Holy Ghost without waiting. In Acts chapter 9, Saul received the Holy Ghost without waiting. In Acts chapter 10, Cornelius and his household received the Holy Ghost while Peter was preaching. Bible says while he was speaking, the Holy Ghost fell. No waiting, no tarrying. Acts chapter 19 the 12 up, uh, disciples in Ephesus received the baptism of the Holy Ghost without waiting. 
So don't be deceived, child of God. If you have been believing God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, please stay with us. We shall be praying for you after teaching you. There is no need to wait because now the Spirit of God has been given. Since the day of Pentecost, when you, receive, when you desire to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when you desire to receive the Holy Spirit, understanding that he is a gift, a gift is to be received, child of God. When you are extended a gift, you must receive it. It doesn't come automatically, but you must receive the gift. So understand, child of God, that the promise, the gift that Jesus bequeathed to the disciples, the biggest, the most uh, priceless, was not any physical asset. It was the Holy Spirit. Think about that, child of God. And may it be that we shall begin to hunger and to thirst for the Spirit of God in our lives like never before. So I'm speaking today about the Holy Spirit, God's gift and promise to the believer. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. The Bible says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. We see the same instruction, the same command. He says he commanded them, not a suggestion. He didn't suggest to them. He commanded the disciples to wait in Jerusalem. He says, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The Bible says in verses 8, Jesus said that, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts or the ends of the world. But you shall receive power. That word power is the word dunamis, which means miraculous power. In other words, child of God, if you are going to be a kingdom witness, if you are going to be a witness of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are working from, whether it is in the church, whether it is in the marketplace, wherever you are placed, if you are ever going to witness about Jesus Christ, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need the gift of the Holy Spirit. You need the promise of the Holy Spirit. It, it was never the intention of Jesus for the disciples to go and witness without being endued with power from on high. Why? Because when we go out in the world to witness, we encounter demonic powers. We encounter spiritual powers. And so we need a higher power to subdue the powers of darkness. And therefore, the Bible says in Luke 10, 19, that behold, I give unto thee power. That word their power is the word exousia meaning delegated authority. I give you authority to trample over all the power of the enemy, over all the dunamis of the enemy, over all the miraculous power of the enemy. Meaning what? That there is also miracle power that is demonstrated by the kingdom of darkness. But I give you authority over that power, that miraculous power. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And nothing shall by any means harm you. So child of God, we need now more than ever before. Because we are in the end times. And because God has spoken to us a prophetic word of revival. I want to encourage us to align ourselves and receive a fresh in feeling. If you have ever been baptized before, ask God for a fresh anointing. Don't dare go another day 
serving him, witnessing for him, for the kingdom of God, without the fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost. You need a fresh touch, a fresh oil. Psalms 92 verses 10. The Bible promises us to be anointed with fresh oil. I have been anointed with fresh oil. May we be anointed with fresh oil even today. And that oil is the oil of the Holy Spirit. I want to begin to conclude this morning. Wherever you are watching from, whatever time you are watching this, this broadcast. I want to begin to conclude this way. Jesus was teaching about prayer. In the book of Luke chapter 11. And verses 9 to 13. And this is what he said. He said that I say unto you. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. And then he says for everyone that asks receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And him that knocketh it shall be opened. And then he took it to an example to show us. Contrasting humanity with divinity. He said... If a son shall ask bread of any of you as the, that is a father, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? And the answer is no. And he says, or oh, if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? He says, no. And then he says, or oh, if he shall ask an egg, will he give him a scorpion? Child of God, the obvious answer is no. And then verse 13, he says something very beautiful that I wanted to catch. He says, if you then, being evil, know how to go give good gifts to your children, how much will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to him that ask? How much will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Child of God, I want you to note down these three points as we bring this to a, con a, a closure tonight. It is the, des the desire of God the Father to give us the Holy Spirit. He says, if you ask, Luke eleven thirteen, 13, our Heavenly Father will give us the Holy Spirit. That is his desire, to give us the Holy Spirit. So I want us to note these three things as we conclude. Number one, the Holy Spirit is the person and the power by which assistance and ability are given for serving and for sharing the life and the power of God's kingdom with others. So we need the Spirit of God. He is the power by which we share, by which we serve. Secondly, please understand that the Holy Spirit's power must be received. It must be received. We must be intentional in receiving the Holy Spirit's power. Understand, child of God, that it is not an automatic experience. That because you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, therefore you have the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand the distinction. In John chapter 4, Jesus Christ is speaking to the woman, the Samaritan woman. And he said that the one that drinks the water that I give shall never thirst. He's speaking about the experience of conversion. He says, but the water which I give him will become in him a well of life leading to everlasting life. So he's speaking about a well. No one that is born again is born again without the Spirit of God. Please understand. Every child of God, every believer is born again by the Spirit of God. So they have a measure of the Spirit. But as I will share later, the power of the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, the gift of God, the promise of the Father must be received subsequent to our conversion experience. So, please understand that whereas the Holy Spirit indwells every believer, Romans 8, 9, the Bible says that 
the Spirit of God indwells us, dwells within us. But he must also not only feel, but also overflow the believer. The Spirit of God must come out of us, John 7, 37, 39. There must be rivers of living water. Contrast the rivers with the well of water. So the Spirit of God, the power of the Holy Spirit must be received. Number three, when the Holy Spirit fills you, you will know it. When the Holy Spirit fills you, you will know it. Just like you know that you are born again, that a day came and you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and now you are a child of God. Even so with the power of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit fills you, you will know it. Acts chapter 19 and verse 2. Paul comes to the believers in Ephesus, the 12 believers, and he says to them that did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? How could he ask that question if they couldn't know? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So child of God, understand that when the Spirit of God fills you, you will know it. And I will share my testimony as we go along in this series. So I want us to begin uh, to conclude tonight by understanding that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is God's gift to you as a child of God. Jesus is the gift of God to the world. But you, you as a child of God are entitled to receiving God's gift, which is the Holy Spirit. And that is a fundamental thing that we need now more than ever before. So I want to pray for us this morning in Jesus' name. Father, even as we have heard your word, I pray for these, your servants, wherever they are watching from. I pray that, Lord God, this word shall be stirred up in their lives like by the Holy Spirit like never before. I pray, King of glory, and even as we position ourselves for the revival that has been prophesied, as we position ourselves for ministry, both in the marketplace and in the pulpit, I pray we will make room for your Holy Spirit. Father, it is written in Ephesians 3.19 that you shall fill us with the fullness of God. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18, we should not be drunk with wine, but instead we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. May you now, Heavenly Father, begin to fill your servants. Even those that were filled before, let them receive a fresh infilling in their lives. And so if this broadcast has blessed you, please keep in touch with us. The numbers will be scrolling at the bottom of the, of the screen. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your testimony. And if you want us to pray with you, please let us know by the same numbers. And I pray that may God richly bless you. May the shalom of God be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Shalom.